Okay, but from, also from my side. Um, my name is David Reif, and I'm going to um, give some details on this uh, mineral swing dynamics, uh, which was uh, already introduced a um, little bit by uh, Professor Monty. <coughs> And yeah, as soon as I think it's working. Oh, the battery is flashing. Okay, I, anyway, I can I can try to do it manually. Well that's Okay, first uh, let me introduce the team that is um, that, that has been uh, recently working on uh, on this uh, linear swing dynamics topic. Um, uh, some of the colleagues are also sitting here, so you can uh, uh, approach us uh, anytime uh, after the, this lecture. Uh, first, I will uh, give a short. Um, um, recapitulation on swing dynamics, uh, just to know what we are uh, going to linearize afterwards, uh, uh, followed by a very short um, uh, introduction of, um, uh, of this uh, virtual inertia concept. Uh, it's important that it's a one way of uh, um, dealing with the frequency regulation and the momentary results in the future. There are several solutions that are. Um, thank you so much. That are uh, able to that are able to um, provide this virtual inertia, uh, and uh, I will just give a highlight on on, on them, and then uh, just because um, I want to point out uh, those uh, two or three solutions that we are going to use that I'm going to present you uh, also uh, from this. Uh, plethora of, of uh, solutions. And then I will go into the detail of uh, the linear swing dynamics and, and explain uh, the equations and everything that theory that uh, relates, uh, that is related. Also, I will, um, in the end, I will give you some, some challenges that we are still facing when uh, developing this uh, uh, theory. First of all, swing dynamics. So, okay, we are talking about um, swing equation that is, or, or the swing mechanism that is the uh, one very convenient and very widely used method of uh, expressing the electromagnetic dynamics uh, in a simple and uh, understandable way. Its uh, appeal is in its uh, uh, simplicity. Uh, first, uh, we are uh, looking at a very simple model, a single machine infinite bus model. Um, that means we have one um, conventional generator, synchronous generator, and we are going to explain uh, how this synchronous generator uh, is performing this electromechanical uh, swings, these oscillations, um, what is driving these oscillations uh, against um, uh, this network model, which is uh, supposed to be a uh, fixed uh, voltage uh, generator. So we have a synchronous generator here, modeled by uh, a voltage source and a network uh, that is also modeled by a voltage source. Uh, this uh, voltage is fixed, and we also have, for the first, uh, for our first approach, a very simple network model, um, which is determining impedance, um, purely reactive here in this case. So this, and this voltage can be controlled uh, by the synchronous generator, or later, if you replace the synchronous generator by a power electronic device, that will be uh, controlled um, by power electronics. Okay, and and uh, the angle between uh, this voltage and this voltage, if we call it delta. So basically, you have seen this equation already. Uh, this is um, the, the equation that we that we look at that ex expresses transmitted power over this uh, seven uh, impedance uh, from the generator towards uh, the network. And um, when we look at the dynamic behavior of uh, such a system, then we have these two simple differential equations that. Um, 
that explain the change in the, uh, the angle uh, and uh, this rotor angle or, or this angle that we denote by delta and uh, also explains uh, the changes in the frequency, uh, this angular frequency we call on angle here. So basically this is the mechanical power uh, when we are talking about single generators, that is the mechanical power or later when we are talking about uh, power electronics, this will be the, the reference power uh, that uh, uh, that is uh, assumed to be constant and this is the electric power that is uh, in the end the actual power that is being transmitted this is some sort of reference this is the actual power and this is some some you know, some damping uh, phenomenon uh, that is uh, for damping these uh, these oscillations so basically this is the swing equation that uh, um, that um, is a very proper and nice tool to to describe uh, uh, large portions of, of uh, or, or the main characteristics of, of uh, transient behavior uh, in the power system. And this is our main focus now. Of course, we could, we are not going to, but we could uh, elaborate uh, and use more uh, higher order models and so on. That's not, not our topic now. Uh, this is simple enough and, and good enough to, to express uh, uh, most of what we want to do. Now, in uh, I'm going to to use the word uh, linearization uh, in, uh, in two, two senses. I'm, I'm going to talk about linearization as a mathematical construct that we all know probably, uh, which, is, which is some sort of approximation, approximating a nonlinear uh, behavior, a nonlinear phenomenon uh, mathematically. This is one meaning of the word linearization that I'm going to use. But in the end, our uh, main goal is to to physically linearize some inherent non-linear behavior. So this word, this word linearization has two meanings, also within the next hour that I'm going to use, but from the context it will be um, obvious uh, which meaning I'm using. Now I'm talking about this uh, small signal approximation. So uh, when we are uh, looking at, uh, at this, at this uh, swing equation that um, we had on the, the last slide, this is, um, this is something that's non-linear because here we see, for example, a non-linear function of delta. So if we want to use a small signal approximation of, uh, of that or, or of any uh, differential equation, uh, we start from, from a steady state uh, where um, this differential equation has, uh, has a steady state, meaning that the differential is, is zero, so nothing is moving, we are fine, we are good. And the linear approximation uh, mainly states that uh, the, the, this nonlinear function uh, can be approximate, approximated uh, in the vicinity of, uh, of the steady state point, which is fortunately zero, uh, by uh, taking a small deviation from that uh, steady state and the derivative of, uh, of that nonlinear function. Okay, and if this function has two variables, as here, then uh, we use the, the partial derivatives. Uh, and the two um, uh, small um, deviations from the uh, from the steady state point. So this is this is a widely used tool that is um, used to linearize this swing equation. Now I'm talking again uh, about the mathematical sense of uh, linearization, about the this approximation, the linear approximation. So if we are looking at this um, <coughs> differential equation, and we have some uh, we have a steady state um, point where uh, the derivative terms are are zero, meaning that we have uh, uh, at this we have the, the steady state frequency, and we have uh, some some point uh, delta where uh, the uh, set point or, or the mechanical power is the same as the as the electrical power. Then the frequency won't change and the delta angle won't change. So we can. Uh, use this small signal approximation, meaning uh, from the steady state points, we move away from uh, by some small amounts of, um, of in the variables. And then we see that um, uh, these equations, these differential equations become, uh, um, or, or will, will turn into a form uh, that, um, that has um, a linear form, linear in terms of uh, new variables, new small differential variables, delta omega and uh, delta small delta. Um, 
this is linear in these uh, terms because this is now a constant from the point of view of, of uh, these two state variables, right? This just this term just tells us that uh, the behavior of this uh, dynamic system is dependent on uh, the steady state, the, the actual operating point, right? But um, apart from that, uh, if, if you look at the two uh, state variables, uh, these are uh, linear terms, right? So this is a, a small signal, a linear approximation of that uh, nonlinear differential equation. Um, So we can write uh, this, uh, this equation also in, in uh, such a, a more compact form. So we see the derivatives uh, of the state variables here. These are the state variables. And here we have a, a matrix. Uh, that the form that we can just multiply uh, something by the state variables to obtain the derivative, that, that is the linear form, right? We just have the first order terms here. And this matrix is, uh, is a constant matrix from the point of view of these variables. I like this uh, this uh, term is depending on dependent on the actual operating point, but from the small signal point of view, it's uh, it's we can keep it as con uh, consider it as constant, right? Now, if you look at the eigenvalues of of uh, this system, <coughs> then okay, we take the determinant of uh, of this matrix, solve the characteristic equation, and then we arrive at uh, at the eigenvalues of uh, of that uh, linearized system, we have here the term gamma, and we have we see here that the the eigenvalues of um, of this um, uh, system of equations is dependent on the operating point, on the actual operating point. Okay, so that's that's the starting point I would like to 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 offer for further thoughts. Um, we start here because the uh, or we start thinking about uh, the linear uh, swing dynamics because uh, the eigenvalues, the dynamic behavior of the swing equation, the dynamic, dynamic behavior of this uh, um, power system model that we are using is uh, dependent on the actual operating point. And that means that uh, depending on, uh, okay, this is the well-known, okay, we also seen it here, the, the, the power that is transmitted uh, over that reactance as a dependence on delta. You see, depending on the operating point, whether we are here, here, or here, depending on the power that we want to transmit, the dynamic behavior of the whole system is changing. So if we, if we have, a, have a large system of many, many, um, um, of, well, even if in, in, the, in the case of synchronous generators, there are many synchronous generators, right? Uh, but if we if we make the leap to 2030 or 2050, where uh, most of these synchronous generators will be replaced by um, uh, power uh, electronic devices, uh, more or medium sized uh, uh, power converters or inverters, then the number of these devices will be in order of magnitude higher than in the number of synchronous generators. So the, the assessment of the dynamic behavior of the whole, whole system will be much much uh, com more complicated just because of the number uh, of these devices and because uh, everything depends on, uh, the whole dynamic behavior depends on the operating point. And um, I mean, this phenomenon, this uh, dependence is, is already complicated in the, in the case where you have a large interconnected system and, and many synchronous generators, but because of the, the, the because of the number of, of devices, it will be even more complicated um, in case of in, in the future power systems, so that is why we, when uh, just one step back, um, the motivation um, for this whole linear swing uh, uh, dynamic concept is uh, one of the motivations is just this that we are trying to find a way to to make this uh, dynamics uniform. So if there is a new generator, uh, new power electronic generator attached to the system, uh, the whole dynamic is not being messed up again, uh, but uh, we, we can be sure that uh, if they behave in the same way, in the same linear way, then, um, then the dynamics will be uh, at least uh, the same for all uh, operating points. Okay, I will be get back to this uh, in a moment, but 
once again, this is one of the motivations to think about this LSD uh, concept. Okay, uh, if we if we have uh, a tool, this swing equation to to describe uh, the dynamic behavior of the power system, then as Professor Monti already mentioned in his in his uh, uh, talk that. Um, one of the future uh, directions is to, to implement this as, um, as virtual uh, inertia or virtual synchronous machine um, uh, in, in future converter-based power system. That means we somehow can uh, mimic this um, uh, swing behavior. And here you see, from based on this publication, you see uh, that there are many, many ways of, of doing that. So many, many approaches to, to somehow implement this um, um, not just the swinging behavior but the whole um, dynamics that synchronous generators offer in the traditional power system there are many ways to, to implement that in, in uh, converter based power systems one of them is um, uh, okay virtual I thought one of them is um, the swing equation based uh, method taking well focusing on that swing equation that I've been uh, um, addressing two slides ago uh, the other one uh, uses this synchronous generator based model uses more elaborate or more detailed models of uh, synchronous generators higher order models of the synchronous generators um, and one one uh, and here we arrive at synchron verters that I will uh, that I will I mean professor Monte already showed the topology but uh, I will get back to that uh, later synchron verters are one of the way of expressing uh, this dynamic <coughs> behavior. Virtual synchronous generators are uh, the other way of doing that, and virtual oscillator control was also mentioned, but um, I'm not going to in, in those details anymore. So, main point here is that there are many methods. Uh, we are going to see this type and this type of uh, implementation uh, later. And yeah, there are many uh, features, um, weaknesses, and advantages of these methods. Um, one point, for example, of, of um, yeah. comparison is if, uh, for example, a PLL is, is necessary for, for the implementation or not. Uh, PLL, the phase lock loop, is, uh, is known to cause some problems uh, um, in, in power converter-based uh, or water source converter-based systems. Uh, PLLs are used to detect frequency and uh, to track uh, frequency, but they are also an, another source of uh, nonlinearity, and they are also um, they could cause some, some stability problems um, in a larger power system. So one of the, 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 the aspects is if uh, uh, one of the aspects to look at is if uh, the, the uh, uh, realization uh, has to use has to rely on PLL or not. But there are of course you see here uh, other um, aspects to look at. Okay, this virtual synchronous generator, you have also seen this picture. Uh, what do we have here? Here we have this. Um, this is uh, the Tevinin equivalent generator, this remote um, system model that we just mod are modeling by a constant uh, voltage source. This is uh, the, the grid impedance, the Tevinin grid e impedance that um, um, we approximated only by uh, reactance uh, in our earlier side slide. This is a filter. Everything from here belongs to the, to the mm, converter, this is just a filter, this is the PWM di driven uh, uh, bridge, and these blocks implement conventional ways uh, of, um, of um, voltage source uh, converters, uh, an inner current control loop, an outer voltage control loop, um, the names are obvious here, virtual impedance is just an addition to, to the voltage control and, and um, has various um, uh, nice features uh, to well, to decouple power uh, reactive and, and active power control, for example, um, and and uh, this block implements um, in this uh, virtual synchronous generator concept. This, this block implements uh, that uh, swing uh, equation and the power frequency group also that uh, that is used to to uh, well define an inner omega and inner uh, basically frequency and inner frequency and uh, a corresponding term that um, well, that um, adjust the, the angle, the output angle of the voltage uh, in order to 
uh, to behave like a synchronous generator. So this this uh, variable or these two variables behave like uh, the rotor angle or the, the rotor, uh, synchronous machine uh, rotor speed uh, of a synchronous machine uh, to adjust uh, power as needed. This is one of the many uh, implementations of uh, of swing behavior, and um, and here you see. Uh, the control loops, uh, this was the inner voltage control loop, uh, current control loop, the voltage control, the virtual impedance. Um, this is a DQ frame where the, this uh, well-known decoupling uh, uh, terms are necessary to, to be able to uh, control uh, the D and the Q terms independently. And here you see um, that um, this block, this block, the virtual inertia power control loop, um, in its realization, it's basically uh, here you see uh, a one one integrator. Uh, this these blocks are implementing those swing equations, but well, basically those two swing equations that we well, the, the swing equation, the longer one that we um, that we analyzed uh, earlier. Okay, so uh, this is if we if we look it in, into the to the, in, to the inside, what's happening inside uh, those control blocks? Uh, these are uh, the control techniques that allow us to uh, define and operate a virtual synchronous machine is one of the possible implementations of, of artificial um, synchronous generator-like uh, dynamic behavior in uh, power systems. Uh, this is the other one, the synchroverter one, um, which uh, uses uh, something uh, that is uh, very similar to, or the same, basically the same as the swing equation, uh, but uh, also other equations like the torque calculation, voltage flux equation, and something uh, equations that are more similar, more uh, more um, yeah, similar to to uh, what's actually a synchronous generator. These equations are uh, modeled here, and this is basically the swing behavior that is uh, um, that is implemented here. Uh, this is generating the pulses, and here uh, the the controller can track. Mm, Active and reactive power, uh, like like a synchronous generator can do the same, and this is uh, this is um, these blocks are uh, responsible for reactive voltage, uh, reactive power and voltage control, and these for uh, power and frequency control. So, as you can see, there are many, well, at least two, but believe me, there are many uh, implementations, and um, uh, these are just well. Co uh, concept or control methods that we are going to tap into and that we are going to change in a way that uh, these are able to behave in a in a more convenient manner uh, for future power electronic systems. Okay, so let's get now to the to the linear swing dynamics concept. So we see that uh, swing dynamics uh, itself is something that um, uh, that is there in. in uh, actual power system, and we have seen that uh, there are some uh, control methods that are able to implement those swing dynamics in the future converter-based power systems. Now, how can we make uh, that swing behavior in the power electronic world more convenient, more uh, uh, better than just mimicking the synchronous generator behavior? That's the next question. So basically, um, the motivation, as Professor Monte also already pointed out, one of the point is that we have more degrees of freedom. We, we can do more by power electronics than we can do by uh, synchronous generators. Uh, mainly because, not, not only, but, but uh, one, one of the points uh, is that uh, we, are, we are much faster than conventional controllers, turbine governors, or automatic voltage regulators. So we can do more. We have more degrees of freedom, and we, have, we are faster. We are able to regulate everything fast if we want, if it's beneficial for the system. So the question is, how how uh, is it possible to to shape the, the system dynamics? Um, for example, uh, if we look, uh, if you want to uh, design a certain uh, power system dynamic behavior, maybe rate of change of frequencies or, or frequency nodes or something, if we have that uh, performance specifications, then we are able to derive uh, the eigenvalues of the system uh, that that make the system behave like that. And then uh, where LSD comes in is 
we want to keep those eigenvalues at those uh, specified spots, spec uh, specified locations, uh, to to enable uh, that uh, it's always operating at that uh, optimal uh, point. Okay, what is uh, how is this LSD uh, concept working? The the first approach is the at least two approaches. The first approach is that we are going to eliminate this nonlinearity in the swing equation. As we have seen that this is the nonlinearity that uh, when we linearize and when we uh, calculate the eigenvalues, this is the nonlinearity that makes the eigenvalues depend on the actual power, uh, operating point. Right? This is the nonlinearity. This is the power transfer equation, and because we depend um, because the transmitted power depends on delta in this nonlinear way, this is why the eigenvalues in the end will depend on the actual operating point. So this is something we want to eliminate in, in the first uh, place. How do we get rid of this nonlinearity? Uh, taking into consideration that this equation is something that is uh, that is uh, pure physics. That is that is there. The, the world behaves like that. And uh, what are what are our options to to change that? Well, we are seeing that uh, the, the quantity E and X are fixed. This is the Thevenin equivalent of the, the remote network, right? So we cannot really change that. These are, these are given. This, these uh, two factors, E and X, depend on, on the network that we are analyzing or modeling. And this, this P is uh, well, the power <coughs> that we want to transmit. This is, um, well, depending on the uh, solar irradiation or depending on the wind conditions. But this is also fixed. So. Um, the only thing we can do here is to to change the voltage of the of the controller. Um, the voltage is well n does not have to be very very fixed. Right? It, the voltage can be um, there are there is a voltage tolerance band which is ten percent in in usual distribution systems and five percent in in transmission systems. So there is uh, there is uh, some some space some some uh, and bandwidth, uh, maybe that's not the best word. There is some some uh, tolerance bound on the voltage that we can play with. This means that um, if we look at the, this uh, sinusoidal uh, curve that repres represents this uh, power transfer equation, this is uh, this is the black one by fixing the voltage of the controller. But if we allow, if we go higher with the voltage. Uh, we can transmit more power, and if we go lower with the converter voltage, we are able to transmit uh, lower power at the same angle. Meaning that if I want to move on a, if I want to achieve a linear uh, dependency of, of uh, delta and, uh, between delta and p, then I have to continuously change the voltage between, in this case, uh, 0.9 and 1.1, uh, depending on the actual uh, power that I want to transmit, right? If I'm, if I want to transmit this amount of power, actually, this amount of power, then I have to be, I have to keep my voltage at one per unit, the original voltage. But if I want to transmit more power, I have to increase uh, my voltage to arrive the linear curve. And if I want to transmit less power, then I have to decrease my voltage. Uh, to be always on the linear curve, right? Now, um, okay, and this means that I can basically, and this is, a, when I'm talking about this linearization, this is a physical uh, linearization. I'm really physically linearizing uh, something that is non-linear, basically, by changing one parameters and, and, and act in an act. In a, non in, in a linear way. So this is not an approximation. This has nothing to do with uh, mathematical approximation. I'm not approximating. I'm really forcing my physics to behave like uh, in this uh, linear way. Uh, okay, so um, of course I still have this um, uh, nonlinear equation because this is uh, how physics works. But this is something that I, I want to achieve. I want to achieve, uh, this is basically describing the blue curve, that, the blue linear curve that we have seen before. Basically, what I want to achieve, of course, I have dependency on x, I have some dependency on the, the voltages. This E are nominal voltages, uh, remote voltages. This epsilon is the voltage tolerance band, and I want to achieve uh, 
linear behavior on delta. So this is what is actual physics, and this is what I want to achieve. So basically, if I have, uh, if I know what power I want to transmit, based on these equations, I can derive the angle that is necessary to do so, and based on uh, the other equation, I can derive the voltage, the actual voltage I have to um, set at my converter to be always on that linear blue curve in the previous figure. Okay, I think I make a couple of seconds, I, I stop here and ask you if you have any questions regarding this before I move on. If not, then I'm uh, moving on. So basically what we have now is, uh, is a control law that tells me, based on the actual power output that I want to achieve, what is the voltage, uh, converter voltage, output voltage that I have to set to be always on this linear curve. So in the end, um, if I analyze my, uh, my uh, system, my dynamic behavior, the, the swing equation, it turns out that uh, instead of the voltage, I, I put in that um, controlled voltage that I have, and it turns out that uh, the, the dynamic behavior uh, does not contain anymore uh, the dependency on the on the operating point. All I have here is uh, constant uh, terms, and it turns out that the eigenvalues are constant. So basically, only depend on the inertia constant, the damping constant, the short circuit power at the connection point, meaning uh, uh, this term, uh, and that's it. The eigenvalues are constant. Uh, and I'm, uh, all my dynamic behavior is independent of the actual operating point, right? This is the basic idea of, of uh, uh, linear swing dynamics. Um, it only gets complicated from, from this point. Um, before making it more complicated, um, we tested this on a simulation model. So basically, this is the sim this is the model of a virtual synchronous generator that I've shown you before with this uh, blue and, and orange uh, blocks of, of uh, control blocks. This is the inner current control. This is the voltage control block. This is the virtual inertia and power control block. And what we're doing here, this implements the swing equation, but what we're doing here, based on the P reference, the power that I want to output here, based on this P reference and uh, the reactance and the voltage that I assumed to be known, uh, I can, um, well, um, change the voltage reference uh, so that it behaves like described before, right? And this is just, uh, well, the, the swing equation that's implemented here. It's already shown. And uh, here we see, uh, well, dynamic behavior of, um, of uh, if we are not applying LSD and stepping uh, power outputs. Here we see reference and actual power outputs. Main point here is that the voltage is basically not changing. The voltage reference is constant if I'm not using LSD. Uh, here I see frequency changes and, and changes in the in, in delta angle. But if I'm not using the LSD, I'm still moving on the, um, on the sinusoidal uh, curve between delta and P. But if I'm uh, using LSD, meaning I switch on that block that um, constitute this uh, LSD control, then I'm const uh, based on the, the power steps, I'm changing the, the voltage reference also. And that means that uh, instead of the sinusoidal curve, I'm at least at my, my steady state points are at the linear curve. So I have linearized the dynamics um, also in this um, virtual synchronous generator um, setting. OK, this was uh, linear swing dynamics assuming uh, inductive only uh, network, so basically uh, sort of transmission uh, system. But if I have a resistive inductive network, then the power transfer equation becomes a little bit more complicated than, uh, than uh, what we've seen before. We have here um, not only this term, but also these two terms. <coughs> and the question is, uh, what I'm going to do with, uh, with this cosine delta? I know what to do with the sine delta. I know how to approximate the sine delta function. We have done that before. Uh, but what, OK, approximate it with delta. Delta is, well, this is just the first term in the Fourier uh, series uh, of the sine uh, sin function. Uh, what am I doing with the cosine function? If I approximate it uh, with the first term in the, in the uh, Fourier series, it won't work. It's quite obvious that. Um, this is a very bad approximation of the cosine term. So if I'm ap applying this approximation, <coughs> then 
my linearization is really very, very bad, so I'm not doing this. Uh, what you're doing is um, applying um, more elaborate uh, approximation, though it has nothing to do with the Fourier series. Uh, it's uh, a fair approximation of the cosine function, meaning that the cosine delta will be replaced with this term because this is then a linear function, right? And the sine delta will be replaced with this. And if I'm doing this, I'm getting, um, well, again, uh, a linear, but well, linear is, of course, linear, uh, but I'm between the, the upper and lower uh, limits or the upper and lower bounds of the, the voltage. And um, it can be shown that um, uh, this approximation is, is valid and is good for almost um, any, um, any R over X uh, ratio. So basically for any grid, any uh, grid between R over X, very small or R over X infinite, pure, pure inductive and pure resistive grid, uh, there can be found a linear approximation uh, where the upper and lower voltage bounds are uh, respected. Assuming that these voltage limits are 10%, if I'm going to, to for, for systems with 5% uh, uh, tolerance bounds only, then obviously these, these two curves, uh, this one and, and the, the, uh, the green one, get closer to each other, and it's not always uh, possible to find a linear curve between them. But 5% um, Tolerance applies only to transmission systems, right? Where uh, this is this R over X is very small anyway. So we are back at the, the former case, basically where uh, R is not present, right? And there we have all already shown that uh, this approximation works. Okay, so uh, it is uh, uh, here we derive again the, the voltage control uh, law. This is yeah much more complicated. Uh, but the point is that the approach is again the same. Based on the power that we want to transmit, we define uh, delta and in the end we define a voltage that is necessary uh, to, to be always on the, on the linear curve. And if we simulate that, uh, it turns out that, yeah, it works. So if, if you take a pure resistive grid, then, um, then uh, instead of this uh, nonlinear behavior, it starts uh, this is what used to be a sign, but it starts with like this and will go like this. Uh, this is the no LSD case, and if I linearize it, of course, then it will be linear. So it works also in the uh, dynamic simulation, and the eigenvalues, again, uh, are a little bit more complicated, contain the term R, um, the resistance, but are independent on the operating point. Okay, so we managed to uh, keep the eigenvalues constant. Now, things get a little bit more complicated if we look towards... Um, uh, multi-machine systems. So we are still in the single machine infinite bus model. This is just a single machine, but um, before uh, I have only shown this part of, so I assumed positive delta angles, but in theory um, it is possible to have both directions of, of power flow. So meaning uh, that for I have to come up with something in the negative uh, uh, delta range also. Uh, and then I have, uh, I have to admit that I'm, I'm, I cannot linearize this uh, curve anymore. This curve, this blue curve, cannot be linearized anymore. Uh, the best approximation I can do is uh, to use this absolute value function. Um, in the end, if I use this absolute uh, value approximation, then uh, the eigenvalues will contain uh, the, the sign of this delta. So based, based on, the, on the direction, if it's inbound or outbound, outbound uh, power flow, based on this, the eigenvalues will have different values, right? But these are still constant. So, though not, uh, if you if you make small uh, changes in the in the, the power flow, but keep the same direction, the eigenvalues will not change. The eigenvalues will change if, if the power flow direction changes. So basically, um, these are uh, still constant eigenvalues. Okay. Are you still with me? More or less. Any questions? No. Okay. Um, okay. So this was the case of um, of uh, single machine systems. How to keep the dynamics constant um, in a single machine infinite bus system? Now, if we go to a multi machine system, we have uh, many many uh, generators in the system. Then uh, we have a more, com more much more complicated power flow uh, uh, case. 
Uh, and here we see the power flow equations. Uh, still, uh, let's start with the lossless uh, case. Then these are my, our power flow equations. And um, this is the desired behavior. So if I want to do something similar that I've done before, then I just want to eliminate this sine function from the power flow equations, right? I don't want the sine function here. So basically what I want to have is uh, some uh, yeah, voltage times uh, linear uh, multiplication in delta, okay? It turns out uh, after some uh, manipulation of the equations that I can write my power flow, my desired power flow equations and my desired P delta uh, relation uh, like this. This is the vector of uh, power injections at, at each node. I have a system, several nodes, several machines, power injections uh, here in this vector, and these are, this is the delta vector, the angles at each, uh, each uh, node, and this is what I want. Uh, this, I this is how I want the system to behave. I want a uh, constant matrix to be multiplied with this one, and this, this will behave linear, right? And then my eigenvalues will be constant, and if this relation, if I can achieve this linear behavior. So, uh, from this equation, if I'm giving, yeah, I know that the power injections I want to achieve, uh, given these equations, I can calculate delta. This is just uh, solving a linear set of equations. That's easy. Uh, and then I saw the power flow equations with uh, already uh, known delta values here. The only thing I don't know in this power flow equations are these voltages. So what voltages shall I set in uh, each node to have the same power flow that I had, uh, I, I desire, uh, but with this, um, but with these angles that I calculated based on this LSD control. And <coughs> it turns out that it works. Uh, there is analytical solution for a three machine system. Above that, there is no an analytical solution anymore. But there's this system of equations can be solved numerically, right? And that means that in the end, my system will behave like uh, uh, this. Will be the the, the, the system equation, you see again that uh, here this symbol is just to symbolize that this is a matrix of appropriate size, okay? Fill these zeros here, these ones here, uh, identity matrix here, and here we have nothing that depends on the actual power point. Again, this will mean that in the multi-machine system using this special uh, voltage control law that is being determined numerically from the equations, I can achieve uh, constant dynamics uh, independent on the operating point. So here you see some uh, uh, simulation of what I've just said. Here we have a, a four node um, a system, uh, not fully interconnected, but uh, uh, this is the, the system. And, and here I have some example um, reactances between them and uh, I'm setting several power flow cases by commanding uh, uh, several powers and, and angles at each node, okay? With these different cases, I'm setting different power flows uh, for each case. And uh, in each case, I would, without LSD, I would have different um, set of eigenvalues, right? For this case, I have or for each case, I have the same number of eigenvalues, but these eigenvalues will be different if I'm not using LSD. And if I'm using that LSD concept that I've shown before, in all the four cases, I'm going to have the same eigenvalues, the same dynamic behavior, uh, regardless of which power flow case I'm, I'm looking at. Okay? Um, and also, if I, I simulate um, these... Um, um, make a dynamic simulation and change uh, the power reference set points. I, I see that uh, how the uh, reference is followed at, at each of the nodes. Uh, and what I can observe here is that um, um, I'm basically uh, defining a measure of nonlinearity. I want I want to prove that the system behaves uh, linearly, right, or even in dynamic case. And I'm defining um, well, based on the simulated delta values, I'm defining how the, the actual power uh, outputs would look like if they were if they were linear. If this, if uh, the real behavior would be linear, I would expect uh, these powers, uh, but I'm calculating these powers. So the, the the difference between these powers 
uh, somehow tells me if I'm if I'm not really behaving in a nonlinear way, and then I see that basically uh, this uh, error, nonlinear <coughs> error, is very small, um, below well, two percent, um, and uh, this is just initial transfer, but I'm always below two percent, and only for a very short uh, time. So uh, basically, um, I'm. This 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 curve tell me that um, uh, I cannot draw this p delta behavior in a multi-machine system, right? But uh, what I can do is uh, to demonstrate that I would move if I could if I could uh, show that in multiple dimensions, I would move along the linear line. So here I am on the linear line. The steady state points are always on the linear curve, and only uh, some small dynamic behavior is uh, is. Uh, deviating from that uh, linear curve. Okay, if um, if I have a, uh, if I have lossy lines, then the power flow equations are again a little bit more complicated with this uh, uh, this um, conductance terms appearing in the power flow equations, and uh, I can still well analogously to what I've done before, I can define the desired uh, linear behavior. No sign here, no cosine here, just the absolute value, and it turns out that um, yeah, we can we can solve uh, these um, equations too uh, with the same procedure as before. First, we solve this equation for for delta. Then this is not not a linear equation. That it's not easy to solve uh, like not as easy to solve as a linear equation because we see here the absolute value. But this can be solved numerically, right? And then we can solve the power flow equations knowing these delta values knowing the power, we can solve the, the power flow equations for voltages and then uh, we will uh, obtain the same behavior uh, as expected. Now, okay, <coughs> uh, with the minor difference that in this case the, the eigenvalues will not always be at the same point but will change uh, if the power flows uh, change. So some, yeah? Okay. And this is basically the, the plot. It, it looks like how it looks like where, where we are expecting. This is zero. This is uh, uh, minus b over m, and this is minus b over two m. And this is the plot we are expecting the uh, where we are expecting the the eigenvalues. And um, basically, based on this, those performance um, requirements that I uh, started my motivation, based on some Rocco for another performance requirements, I can. Uh, define maybe a region where I'm expecting my eigenvalues maybe here somewhere and then or, or define some boundaries where I'm expecting my eigenvalues and then uh, I can keep them there with this uh, uh, linear swing dynamic voltage control method. Um, okay, there are some difficulties, some, some further points of research uh, that I did not mention before. Uh, the, uh, um, Basically, the, the point is that uh, the, if the number of nodes is, uh, nodes is n, and if, if I'm in a lossless case, then the independent power flow equations, the number of independent power flow equations is n minus 1 because, all, uh, because I'm lossless, right? right? The, power, the sum of the powers is 0, so I don't have n uh, independent equations, but I'm, I'm n minus 1. So this gives me uh, an underdetermined uh, set of equations, which is good. I have more than one solution, theoretically. Um, because I have only n minus one independent angles. One angle is always a reference, and uh, all the others are, are the independent angles. So basically, I theoretically, I have several solutions of this whole uh, LSD problem, but there is no guarantee that uh, I will always be in the voltage limits. So when I'm in the multi-machine system, there is there is nothing that guarantees me to to be within. Um, 0 0.9 and 1.1 per unit of the voltage. So this is one difficulty that we still need to work uh, on. Um, and by the way, there is also no guarantee that um, there are several solutions. Some of them are not real. Some of them are complex solutions. So I have to filter them out. And they, from the real solutions for voltages, I need real solutions, not complex numbers uh, for the magnitude. And from, from the real solutions, I have to find those that are really uh, within the voltage boundary limits. So this is still um, an issue to solve. Uh, if, uh, 
uh, in, in the case of lossy lines, there are uh, even uh, well some more difficulties. I'm, I'm not going to into the details now. Uh, instead, I'm uh, showing one way out. Uh, there are uh, some challenges, but one way out could be not voltage control based linear swing dynamics, but inertia based LSD. Meaning, uh, <coughs> I have this uh, set of equations. I'm not controlling the voltage to make this linear, but I'm starting from, well, I'm looking at the expression of, of the eigenvalues, and I, I want to make these eigenvalues constant. So then, this is the system matrix I want to achieve, and in order to achieve this, well, this is some the form of the swing equation instead of this one. This is what I want to achieve. This is the desired behavior. So I'm going to change, I'm going to control my inertia constant in order to behave, that, that this swing behaves like this. If it does, then my eigenvalues will be constant. So basically here I'm using not voltage control, but I'm using the, uh, the inertia constant that is not fixed. I'm, I mean, I'm talking about power electronic systems, so we have we have a degree of freedom how to change uh, well, within some boundaries, but we can we can change the, the inertia constant. Unlike uh, with synchronous generators, the, the inertia constant is what is built in, right? But with power electronics, I have this degree of freedom, and if I'm controlling this, then I might have a chance to to arrive at the um, at the constant eigenvalues even without controlling the voltage. And then I don't have the problem with uh, voltage control. There are some difficulties with this one too, but I'm not uh, going into the uh, details. Uh, in the last couple of minutes, I'm going to well, highlight some more of the challenges. One of them is uh, voltage stability. I in the voltage control based setting, if I'm, if I'm manipulating voltages, I'm, um, I'm maybe risking uh, voltage stability. So this has to be investigated in more detail. Um, also, if I'm, I'm uh, controlling uh, a converter, the uh, question always comes up if I'm, if I'm overloading uh, uh, um, a converter or not. So if the converter capacity um, has to be uh, re-rated or, or rated higher in order to, to be able to uh, accommodate this, uh, this control that I'm uh, adding. And we have done some simulations where we show that depending on the R over X ratio, um, uh, how much this over rating or, or uh, re rating has to be. Basically, in, in transmission systems, there, there is no need for, for uh, 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 re rating. Um, okay, just some highlights of uh, different other uh, converter design challenges. So, um, the main challenge here also, as with any other voltage source converter controller design, is how I decouple, how uh, I decouple the dynamics of different controllers, current control loop, voltage control loop, and here the, the VLSD or the inertia control loop, and the PLL, if I am PLL. So these uh, have to be uh, decoupled, um, so have to cover different bandwidths in order to, uh, in order for us to allow to analyze this as uh, an independent um, uh, from each other, right? If I am assuming uh, not constant voltage, but a PV system or a wind uh, turbine, then uh, this voltage, DC voltage dynamics has also uh, has to be analyzed as well. Um, uh, large di disturbances, etc. And we have also uh, trying, we are also trying to to apply uh, this um, uh, to to other uh, devices uh, like HVDC, for example. Have you seen uh, in the keynote presentation that? Um, HVDC is, is a topic that is uh, coming, even MVDC. So if you if you have a, uh, a way to uh, to well, decouple portions of the of the power system with uh, MVDC or HVDC connection, then this device uh, can shift powers, and and then this uh, is also able to theoretically it's also able to to implement um, LSD characteristics, which is beneficial for uh, for that uh, systems. I've uh, we've seen that the PLL is a challenge. Uh, we have seen that the uh, uh, sync converter is uh, one way to, to overcome this because the sync converter topology does not contain uh, uh, the PLL. So basically, uh, one way out of this uh, PLL challenge that is common to VSC control uh, in any, any case, not just from the point of view of LSD, but from the point of view of, of controller design for VSCs. Anyway, um, 
one way out of this is uh, using synchron filters uh, instead of the, the nested control loop uh, virtual synchronous generators. Um, and we are we have a master uh, thesis uh, being finished uh, just in this topic. Okay, and the main challenge that if we want to apply apply uh, this LSD concept in, in practice is how we are going to implement uh, it in a decentralized way, meaning that each unit should only have its own local measurements available. Because the concept that I've shown before contains um, is a centralized uh, control, meaning uh, we assume that we have uh, we have uh, <coughs> we know all the parameters, all the voltages, all the angles in the system. But of course, in order to make it work in, in practice, uh, we have to come up with. Uh, is a local sol solution that gives the same results as the, as the centralized uh, global solution. Uh, one, one way of doing this we are looking into now is the estimation of, um, well, estimation of a single machine infinite bus model for the remaining network. This means estimation of the, of the parameters of the single machine infinite bus model based on local measurements. We still need to prove that this leads to the same result. So basically, as to conclude my, my uh, talk, what have we done? We have analyzed the swing equation. We have shown that we can uh, use the additional degrees of freedom that are present in power electronic systems. We can use these uh, degrees of freedom to, to make this power PD, P delta curve linear. This, in turn, has uh, the consequence that the eigenvalues will be independent of the operating point, that will be constant, that will be predictable. There is no need to do a model analysis in, in, in every uh, operating point with a vast number of, of uh, converters of maybe unknown dynamics or unknown parameters. So if this, uh, if this LSD concept will be further elaborated and, and makes it to network codes, then we can be sure that the dynamics of the whole system is known and predictable uh, if every converter behaves like, uh, like it should be. Um, yeah, but still we have the challenge to, to implement it uh, based on local measurements. Okay. Thank you for your time. That was it from my side.